بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد طيب وصلنا إلى الآية وإن شاء الله start today آية نمبر 158 الله سيد سبحانه وتعالى سورة البقرة Indeed Al-Safa and Al-Marwa are among the symbols of Allah So whoever makes Hajj pilgrimage or uh, to the house or performs Umrah, there is no blame upon him for walking between them and whoever volunteers good, then indeed Allah is appreciative and knowing. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الصَّفَى وَالْمَرْوَى الصَّفَى وَالْمَرْوَى Two mountains. When we go to Mecca, in Kaaba, it is clear for us. Al-Safa al marwa yes, two mountains. And uh, basically, Al-Safa means Al-Hajar Al-Amlas. The uh, smooth stone. Wal marwa Al-Hajar Al-Layin, the soft stone. Yani the scholars mention like, uh, Abu Mudaffar Al-Sam'ani, one of the scholars who spoke about uh, the Qur'an, okay? So, uh, Safa, the, uh, he said, the tough stone and the marwa, the soft stone, okay? But here in the ayah, Safa and marwa, there are, it means the two mountains where we do the sa'i. In between them. Okay. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna as-safa wal marwa. Min sha'air illa. What is the meaning of min sha'air illa? It means are among the symbols of Allah. And you know, in when we say in Islam, sha'ira, okay, it means something clear, obvious for people. For example, the adhan. The adhan is one of the sha'ira. Yani, for example, the scholars don't say uh, when you eat uh, or eating by the right hand is sha'ira, okay? No, no doubt, this is sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu okay? Uh, some scholars said this is wajib, other scholars said mustahab. Okay, but no doubt this is part of our religion. But sha'ira, no, something clear. Like they say, sha'ira al amr al ma'ruf al nihah al munkar, sha'ira al adhan, sha'ira al salah, sha'ira al hajj, al udhiyah. Okay, slaughtering the al qurban, Eid al adha. Okay, they are sha'ir. They are clear for people. Something we do in front of people, and people can see this. So, the things ruled by, uh, يعني for us, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the story of Safa al Marwa started from Hajar, the mother of Ismail. We mentioned the story before, and uh, yeah, if you remember, we mentioned the story that Isma- Um Ismail Hajar, the mother of Ismail, was trying to find water for for her and also for the baby, Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. So, so she went seven times between Safa and Marwa. She was running between Safa and Marwa. Of course, at that time, there was no there was nothing, no trees, no water, no Kaaba, nothing. Okay, just she was running between Safa and Marwa to find the water, then she found the water. Then the Prophet وسلم, said, فَهَذَا سَعِيُكُمْ And it means, and that's why we are doing Sa'i between Safa 
والمروة ابن كثير رحمه الله تعالى مشن سمع حديث about this ayah إن صفى المروة من شعائر الله فمن حج البيت أو اعتمر so whoever makes حج to the house or performs عمرة there is no blame upon him for walking between them okay الحج as a word means the intention or to intend something to intend a place رهيب يعني الحج إلى الجمعية مثلا it means intending the supermarket I mean the linguistic meaning in Arabic الحج means the intention العمرة means a ziyara visiting I mean the linguistic meaning and what is the Islamic meaning الحج as you know when we do and when we go to Mecca during the hajj time and Umrah means when we visit Mecca for tawaf and sa'i then we slaughter the sheep and we shave the the head طيب فمن حج البيت او اعتمر فلا جناح عليه ان يطوف بها طيب الله سبحانه سبحانه وتعالى here there is no blame upon him for walking between them so if you Take this ayah by itself, you understand, uh, it's okay. If I go there, I can do hajj, uh, sorry, I can go between Safa and Marwa. And if I don't know, uh, if I don't do that, there is no problem. But the ayah doesn't mean that. Let's see the hadith mentioned by Nkathir, rahimahullah ta'ala. Al-Bukhari mentioned hadith, Asim. Asim Sulaiman قال I asked Anas 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 رضي الله تعالى عن about Safa and Marwa Anas رضي الله تعالى said in the Jahiliya the pre-Islamic era we were thinking that Safa and Marwa something related to Shirk but then when Islam came أنا سيد أمسكنا عنهما When the Prophet ﷺ came to us أمسكنا عنهما It means we stopped do, doing الصفا والمروة We stopped doing the سعي Between الصفا والمروة Why? Because now they relate الصفا والمروة with شرك So now we are Muslim We should not go الصفا والمروة And there is another hadith There was an idol on الصفا Another one on Marwa, Isaf, and Naila. So, Anna said, when we stopped doing Sa'i between Safa and Marwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah, Inna Safa wal Marwa ta min sha'arillah. Inna Safa wal Marwa ta min sha'arillah. Another hadith, Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala said, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his hajj, in the tenth year, when he finished the tawaf, he finished the tawaf, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He went to the black stone. Fastalama. What does it mean? Stalama. It means to touch the black stone, to kiss the black stone, or if, if, if it is difficult to reach from far away, you can uh, wave your hand there, or you can point your hand toward the Hajj al Aswad. So. The Prophet ﷺ went out from the door of Safa and he was saying, Inna Safa wal Marwata min Sha'airillah. Then he said, Abda ubima bada Allah bi. I start with what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start with. Okay, yani, uh, also this is Sunnah for those who are going to Hajj or Umrah. Uh, yani not now, but maybe if there is someone from Saudi, he can go uh, for Hajj, inshallah. We after finishing the tawaf, go to sorry, go to the black stone, and if you can kiss the black stone, if you can touch by your hand, okay. Then you go to Safa uh, Sorry, you go to Safa Mountain. While going to Safa, you say this ayah: 
إِنَّ الصَّفَا وَالْمَرْوَةَ مِنْ شَعَائِرِ اللَّهِ This part from the ayah. يعني, يعني no need to continue the ayah. You say, إِنَّ الصَّفَا وَالْمَرْوَةَ مِنْ شَعَائِرِ اللَّهِ Then you say, أَبْدَأُ بِمَا بَدَأَ اللَّهُ بِهِ I'm going to start with what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start with. It means, you start, the, the starting point is الصَّفَا. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran said, إِنَّ الصَّفَا وَالْمَرْوَةَ So he mentioned the الصَّفَا before Marwa. Uh, of course, we mentioned that and wa it doesn't mean order. For example, now you ask me, who's with you? I say, here at home, I say, for example, uh, Abdullah or yani, Mubin and Muhammad. Okay, when I tell you Mubin and Muhammad, can you uh, determine who came here first? You cannot. I mean from this sentence. So the letter wa doesn't mean an order. As a, something wajib. But here, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam considered this order. And that's why he said, Abda'u bima bada Allah bi. I start with what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start with. Uh, sorry. <coughs> also, I mentioned a hadith. Habiba bint Abi Tajra said, I saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doing tawaf between Safa and Marwa. And people in front of him. And he was behind them. So while he was doing tawaf or sa'i between Safa and Marwa, she said, I could see his knees. Why? Because imagine if you put uh, the cloth and you tie it, okay, then you run. So because you are running, so automatically your, your garment will go up. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Us'u fa inna Allah katab alaykum sa'i. He said, do sa'i. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it compulsory. Uh, the scholars here sp speak about uh, sa'i. Is it compulsory or mustahab? <sighs> what, is, what is famous now that the, the pillars in hajj are four. Niya, tawaf, sa'i, arafah. In hajj, we have four pillars. Okay, what is the meaning of pillars? It means if you do them, uh, it means you have to do them. If you don't do them, then your hajj is not valid. Your hajj is not valid. So uh, they say, uh, they said so, uh, some scholars, it is mustahab. Other scholars said, no, this is compulsory. And this is supported, I mean, this opinion, opinion that it is compulsory supported by this hadith. Okay, when uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Allah katab alaykum sa'ya fas'aw. Inna Allah katab alaykum sa'ya fas'aw. And also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لِتَأْخُذُوا عَنِّي مَنَاسِكَكُمْ Take from me the pilgrims. How to do the Hajj. طيب. من شعائر الله From the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated for us. طيب. فمن حج البيت واعتمر فلا جناح عليه أن يطوه بهما. Then he said ومن تطوع and whoever volunteers good. What is the meaning? فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعْ تَطَوَّعْ something voluntary, something optional. Uh, some scholars said, فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعْ as a general deed. فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعْ يعني if you do any good deed, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَاكِرٌ عَلِيمٌ طيب فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَاكِرٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah is appreciative. 
and knowing. طيب. So some scholars said, and whoever volunteers good, then indeed Allah is acceptive, uh, appreciative, and knowing. Another opinion said, فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَتْ means, if you do hajj more than one time, this is good. The Prophet ﷺ said to the companions, إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَتَبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْحَجِّ فَحُجُّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made hajj something compulsory. So, do hajj. Immediately a man said, Oh Rasulullah, should we do that every year? The Prophet ﷺ did not answer. So maybe it's, it's the second or third time the Prophet ﷺ said, if I say yes, then it will be compulsory and you cannot do it. Yeah, subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, now the hajj is compulsory once a life, if you can. Right? And how many Muslims until now did not do the hajj? Many Muslims. Many Muslims ignore hajj or delay hajj. They, as if they think hajj is not important now. Why? Because now I am busy to study, to, to find a good job, to find a good wife, to, to raise my children, to find... Uh, يعني uh, house like that طيب so the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said if i say yes then it will be compulsory and you will not do that you will not do that to do hajj every year <laughs> and nowadays uh, you notice people if they are planning to do hajj maybe they plan Maybe two or three years or two months just before Hajj. Subhanallah. Okay, so if you do more, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Shakir, Alim. Alim uh, is known. Alim means subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the one who knows everything subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all knowing. He knows everything subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shakir. This is uh, something nice we should know. Shakir means the one who gives more than what you did. Yeah, and for example, if you say, Subhanallah, 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 hundred times, you say, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, how long this will take? Two minutes, maximum two minutes. Okay, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "If you say to, uh, if you say hundred times, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, okay, Allah will forgive your sins, even if your sins like the foam or the filth of the sea." طيب, يعني, this is something very, uh, يعني, very easy. If Allah subhanahu wa taala wants to make it easy for you, uh, but how much reward you will get? You will get a lot of reward. And this is the meaning of the name Ashakur, subhanahu wa ta'ala, or Ashakir. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَاكِرٌ عَلِيمٌ Then he said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ Indeed, those who conceal what we sent down of clear proofs, and guidance after we made it clear for the people in the scripture, those are cursed by Allah and cursed by those who curse. This is a serious, يعني, tough eye for the scholars. Not easy for them. I mean, I don't mean to, uh, to understand, but to apply. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْبَيْنَاتِ Ya'i Mirzko said this ayah about the Jews. Because they know the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they know that he is haq and that we should follow him. But they hide, hide it, that. They did not expose the haq. And it was very important to tell them this is the haq. So Allah and so the, some scholars said this is mainly for the uh, uh, Yahud and Medina, okay, but 
It applies for anyone who hides his knowledge for the people when they need it. So, inna ladin yaktuma ma anzalna min al bayinat. Those who conceal what we revealed. Al bayinat al huda. Bayinat means the clear proofs. Al huda guidance. Inna ladin yaktuma ma anzalna min al bayinat al huda. Min baadi ma bayinna wa li nasi fil kitab. After we made it clear for them. يعني many times we have this concept in the Quran. Al-bayinat. What is mean bayinat? Something clear. Alhamdulillah, we as Muslims, we don't have something hidden. You can uh, يعني, uh, enter the masjid, no one will stop you, and you can check the books in the, uh, in the shelves. طيب. So, ulaika yal'anum Allah wa yal'anum la'inun. Uh, what is the meaning of la'inun? Ibn Kathir rahimahullah mentioned هم كل فصيح وعجمي إما بلسان المقال أو الحال أو له أو لو كان له عقل أو يوم القيامة طيب أولئك يلعنهم الله الله will curse them and also يلعنهم uh, اللاعين also those who curse will curse them so some scholars said it means like ابن كثير رحمه الله سيد كل فصي وعجمي إما بلسان المقال أو الحال طيب everyone who can speak or who cannot speak طيب uh, the hadith here the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said من سئل عن علم فكتم ألجم يوم القيام بلجام النار the one who asked about something then uh, the scholar did not answer. He knows the answer. Uh, يعني, if we ask a scholar and the scholar knows the answer and we need the answer now, okay? If he did not answer, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, ulji yawm al-qiyam bi lijam al-nar. Means his mouth will be covered by something made of fire. طيب. Uh, there is hadith that Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an said I have uh, two yani, like two jars of knowledge one of them bathathtuhu one of them I, I taught people from this uh, knowledge and the other one hidden it means he did not inform us uh, inform the people. Why? He said, if I inform people, said, I'll be killed. So, uh, can we say, Wallahi, this hadith is contradicting the previous hadith because the Prophet, the one who was asked, then he conceived the knowledge, he will be, he will be covered by a lijam, by something made of fire. They are not contradicting. The, the first hadith, talks about a situation that, yeah, for example, I have a problem in my salah. I went to the imam of the masjid. Just immediately after Asr salah, or for example, after Maghrib salah, I went to the imam and he knows the answer, but he did not give me the answer. He will be punished. Why? Because I need the answer. I need to correct my salah. And the other one about Abu Huraira, Abu Huraira did not mention that you ask me and I, I don't answer. And also, uh, Abu Huraira concealed the hadith which can create fitna, not because the hadith are not good hadith, but because the people, because of the people, they are not good people or they will misunderstand. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُولَيْكَ يَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّاعِنُونَ ويلعنهم اللاعنون. Then he said سبحانه وتعالى إلا الذين تابوا وأصلحوا وبينوا. الله سبحانه وتعالى مش an exception. Not everyone will be uh, punished except for those who repent and correct themselves and make evident what they conceal. 
So, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the chance. Allah gave us the chance for all, all alive people to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani don't say, no, 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 ma uh, there is no use if I repent to Allah because I did a lot of sins. Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Don't lose hope from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't give up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يَغْفِرُ الدُّنُوبِ جَمِيعًا إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَغْفِرُ الدُّنُوبِ جَمِيعًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive all the sins. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, uh, those who conceal the knowledge and people need their knowledge uh, is it the end? They will be punished and they will be in hellfire? No, no. There is a chance for them to repent. If they repent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept from them. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا And here there is an important word. Accept. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا Who repent. وَأَصْلَحُوا Okay. So now, people, uh, sorry, before people used to ask you, and you don't answer. You know the answer. But you do not answer them. I'm not talking about a person that, that uh, you ask me, I'm not sure about the answer. This is wallahi wajib al mustahab. I'm not sure. So I need time to, to search. Or uh, I need to ask someone else. Okay? This is a different story. But we are to uh, talking here about that. I know the answer. But I did not tell you. <coughs> So, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَأَصْلَحُوا وَبَيَّنُوا Okay, they repent. وَأَصْلَحُوا Okay, they, they start to tell people the knowledge. They start to tell people the Prophet, the, 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 that the Prophet Muhammad is the real, or, or he is the last messenger, and everyone should follow him. صلى الله عليه وسلم طيب إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَأَصْلَحُوا وَبَيَّنُوا So here there is an important point, I think I mentioned this before, in repentance. يعني, when you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't be a negative person, you should be a positive person. Do good deeds, because in the, the previous years you did a lot of bad deeds, so now you should compensate. And you do more good deeds, maybe I mentioned this point uh, Sometimes maybe, yeah, some people are very active, but they are not Muslims. Yeah, maybe they are singing, they are playing football, so they are very active, traveling from one place to another place. They try to improve their skills. But just when, yeah, once they accept Islam, subhanAllah, they are doing nothing. Okay, maybe just they go to the masjid and they come home and no doubt this is something great. But where are your activities? Before Islam you are going the whole road, you are going around the whole world to earn money and to be famous. Now, what you are doing for uh, the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So here said Allah subhanahu, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَأَصْلَحُوا وَبَيَّنُوا فَأُولَٰئِكَ أَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَنَا التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here said, except for those who repent and correct themselves and make evident, those I will accept their repentance and I am the accepting of repentance, the, 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 the merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have chance. If you are alive, if you are alive still alive, then you have chance. The doors of repentance are open until the sun rises from the sunset. Okay, so uh, brothers, sisters, if you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to do more righteous deeds. 
Don't consider wallahi خلاص it's enough to pray in the masjid five prayers and that's it. No, no, you should you should do more because when you were non-Muslims you were very active. الذي تاب وصلح وبين فأولئك أتوب عليهم. Then he said سبحانه وتعالى وأنا التواب الرحيم. التواب it means the one who guides people to repent and the one who accepts the repentance from people. Because we, we want two, two things. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah At-Tawbah, ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُ Then they, uh, then, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did, uh, guided them to repentance, then they repented to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ تَابَ عَلَيْهِمْ لِيَتُوبُ Sorry. إِلَّا ذِي تَابُ وَصُحْبَيْهُ فَأُولَاكَ أَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَنَا التواب الرحيم وأنا التواب الرحيم أي I have talked here, brothers and sisters, if you have a question now. Any question? Thank you. Yeah, what if the person has doubt about the knowledge to share or the answer? If you have doubt, don't don't, don't give this knowledge to them. Okay, I ask, I ask you, what is the ruling of Udhiya? Is it uh, wajib or bid'ah? You are in doubt. Okay, don't answer. Because what, what you will answer? You, you tell them, well, I am in doubt? No. If you are sure about something Islamic, خلاص, you, then you can't tell. Otherwise, you say, لا, لا أعلم. If you say, I don't know, then this is fatwa. This is fatwa. Amin, amin. Akh Abdullah al uh, I like to mention a very important point uh, not related to our ayah today one of the brothers uh, yesterday after Jum'ah prayer asked me uh, Sheikh I married and the, the lady uh, he was in doubt يعني. he's in Kuwait and the lady in another country so uh, he told me the story. Okay. I, I, I told uh, the brother, I advised him not to continue this marriage with the, that lady. This is before, before one month. Uh, and also last week he, he said, uh, I like to continue, but there is an issue. So today he called me and he discovered something yani, bad. So خلاص, he decided not to live with this, uh, this lady as a wife. He told me that he married. So I was discussing him. Then I, I told him, where did you do the marriage? He said, here in Kuwait. I said, where? In the court? He said, no, no. Yani I did zawaj urfi. Yani illegal marriage. Okay. Uh, I brought two witnesses and my friend. Habibi. <laughs> What did you do? He said uh, to my friends as witnesses and one, the third one as a wali for the, for the lady. And we finished. I said, no, this is not valid marriage. The marriage should be from wali. Wali means the, the, the guardian. Like, for example, the father. If the father is not there, the, the son or the... I mean, يعني, if, if it is a second marriage, maybe uh, some women have sons, adults. Okay? He said, but uh, this is a revert. If she is a revert, what is the process? I told him, what is the process? 
in Europe, for example, UK, Germany, what is the process of marriage? They go to the Islamic center. Or if there is a court, Islamic court in that country, the judge should do the marriage. Yani, I told him, Allah, I, I, I was very tough with him. Okay, why? Because, subhanAllah, this is a, this is a big mess. Yani, wallahi, uh, there is a new Muslim, a female Muslim, and I told this, okay, yalla, let's uh, do marriage. Uh, come to my house or come to that restaurant. And I tell this lady, well, this is your wali, and these are the two witnesses. And yalla, take, this is mahar, 500 kd. I told him, what is the difference between this and zina and adultery? Uh, yes, you, you brought witnesses, but all of them your friends. All of them your, your friends. What is, what is that, the concept of... Wali, what does it mean wali? Some, something to guard you, someone to guard you, to protect you. But in this case, you bring your friend, so of course you and your friend will not protect that lady. Okay, so I told this man, please, this is the third marriage for him. I told him, please, now don't think about marriage anymore. Now you have to study the chapter of marriage and also the chapter of divorce. This is very important. So, uh, brothers, sisters, marriage without wali, this is not valid. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, لا نكاح إلا بولي. There is no valid marriage without wali, without guardian. Okay? You say, wallahi, she's alone. Okay, if she's alone, go to the court. It is not a Muslim country, go to the Islamic center. But don't do this, <laughs> this marriage only between you and the lady. Or you bring two of your friends or two people from the street. No, it's not allowed. It's not allowed. What is the way to repent, Sheikh, for major and minor sins? Okay. I mentioned uh, these points. Uh, I think last week you were the conditions. The conditions for the t- repentance to be accepted. Um, sorry, I'm. Tired today. I don't know why. Uh, the sincerity to stop the sin, to intend that you will not come again to the sin, to regret and to feel sorry. Uh, uh, if you took something from people, I mean, if you stole something, you have to give this money back to the person. And also, the repentance should be. On time, yeah, before the sun rises from the west. Anything more? Uh, inshallah, after a few days, after maybe three days, the uh, Hijjah month will start. So, for those who are going to give Udhiyah, to do to slaughter the sheep as Udhiyah, okay, uh, they should stop cutting the nails and uh, the hair. If I'm going to do Udhiyah to slaughter, uh, to sacrifice a, a sheep, I should not. Cut my nails or my my hair. My hair? No, this is not uh, sunnah. Some scholars say it haram, some scholars say it uh, makro. But we should avoid that. Who should do that? The person of the udhiyah. Not the whole family. Sheikh, if we make the payment for Udhiya through the link, how will we get the meat? It depends how you, you deal with the, the, the link. This link rela- yani belongs to which uh, place? So you ask them, how can I get my meat? Okay. Yani one, of, one of the lajna, 
I asked them they, uh, about this issue. They said, uh, if you pay, capture the payment, uh, this, uh, the payment bill, then in the second day of Eid al-Adha, come to the Lajna, show us the number, and inshallah we'll give you the meat. Not all the meat, yani some. How is the marriage possible in lockdown when the groom is on country and the right is in another country? How can we proceed it since we can't travel in this pandemic? Find another wife in your country if it is not possible. Okay? Maybe this is uh, another, uh, this, this is an idea. This is uh, one idea. Another thing, okay, uh, yeah, the, the scholars or some scholars mentioned that you can't do the marriage online. But the issue here with the online marriage, hijab kabul, how to make sure this is a real wali. Okay, and yeah, nowadays, alhamdulillah, you have the WhatsApp call, you have the Zoom or something, you can do. Okay, you can do. But the issue now, if she's in another country, if you do the marriage, how can you meet your wife? Okay? You bring your wife here or you go to your wife? Think. Babe. I stop here with the sisters and see you, inshallah, uh, later. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.